Hello, everyone, and welcome to Embracing Your Essence on Lily Dale Radio. I am so excited to be back here today. As you are joining in, please do say hello. I would love to know that you're there, number one, to make sure my tech is working, but also because I haven't seen you guys in so long. I'm really looking forward to talking with you tonight. I'm just checking the chat and moving things around. So thank you so much. I am Colleen Vanderzyden. I am a registered medium here at Lilydale Assembly. I am also a certified intuitive life coach and a certi certified spiritual coach as well. And I am the author of the book Courageously You, Magical Mind Games to Get Unstuck and Reignite Your Joy. And on this show every week on Embracing Your Essence, I talk about something that can help you become the best version of yourself, to help you live the life that you dream of, the life that you want to have. And uh, today we are going to be talking about being the light in the darkness, because as you know, there's a lot of darkness out there right now. And so we are going to talk about how you can make a difference. But before we get to that, we're going to talk about all sorts of other things, of course, as you're all joining in. Oh, thank you so much for saying hello, Denise and Darlene, so that I can make sure that things are happening and working correctly. I have a new computer, so you just never know, right? So everything seems to be good. We had a very busy summer here at Lilydale this past summer. Personally, I taught four workshops and uh, chaired a whole bunch of things, uh, you know, the outdoor services, plus doing regular readings. So it was a very, very busy time. So I'm happy to have replenished my energy and get back here so I can talk to you guys tonight and talk about what we're going to do. Hi, Kelly. Nice to see you. Hi, Samuel. Nice to see you as well. So for those of you who are watching, I can only see the comments if you're on my page, Colleen Vanderzyden, Medium and Intuitive Life Coach. Uh, so if you do have comments tonight, please do move over to my page or I will look at the uh, comments on the other places I've shared the video to and I will respond to them later. And please do follow me here on Facebook, Colleen Vanderzyden, Medium and Intuitive Life Coach. And Lilydale's official page is Lilydale Assembly Incorporated. And that is the one on Facebook. And that is the one where you will want to um, follow there as well. Hi, Christina and Ray and look at all these people how wonderful and Deborah and Joanne nice to see you guys all joining in tonight and we're going to have a great night because we are going to be talking about the darkness and you know how that has been going so we're going to talk about that uh, again uh, as usual write comments ask questions as we go if you've watched me before oh dear i did something weird to my computer um <laughs> as you if you've watched me so, uh, before you know that i will go off on a tangent if you ask a question uh, please try to keep them related to the topic however so tonight uh, well, before i get to the details of this i do want to mention my courageously you small group coaching program is going to be starting in january it's eight weeks on zoom limited to eight people and uh it's a few months away i know but but I've already got people signing up for it. So if you're interested in that, you may want to check that out on my website, ColleenVanderZyden.com or BeCourageouslyYou.com. Right at the very top, there is a link that takes you to it. The whole point of that coaching program in the small group setting like that is to be able to um, grow as your best self, to get rid of the stress, the overwhelm, anything that's in your way of having your joyful life and so we want you to be living in as your authentic self as your soul's light so it ties in very well with my topic tonight so if you're interested in that you definitely want to check it out new this year I do have a payment plan for people who might want to do that so I'll say hello to the rest of the people even though I have seemed to have made my computer be bigger ah yes well I'll get the hang of this computer soon <laughs> and hi Kylie and Felice and Randy nice to see you um, yes thanks for the positive vote there for the coaching program Randy so tonight we are talking about being the light in the darkness we are living as you very well know in extraordinary times that it, the, the times are filled with unrest and anger and judgment and violence and hatred I talked to so many people this summer who were struggling mentally and emotionally with the chaos and turmoil of the world I actually looked at the news this morning and I couldn't believe it I just I had to shut it down and go someplace else because it seemed that everything was bad had bad things happening so when I see 
what's happening out there and when you're seeing what's happening out there we might feel that the peace and the joy are out of reach right and we can feel hopeless like there's no way that this divisive hateful culture is going to improve and when we look at this we feel like we want to do something but we don't know what we can do to make a difference and this unrest and uncertainty are causing a great deal of anxiety and fear have you been feeling this way because because I can tell you I have felt uh, had moments where I felt very helpless where I felt very frustrated or perplexed or even angry at times because I find it very hard to understand hateful people <laughs> I just I just I can't do it and so it's been a challenge for me hi Wendy hi Holly Joe thank you for joining so today we do want to talk about how each one of us can be the light and overcome this darkness that is so scarily present it is possible I'm holding on to hope okay that it is possible and if you are just joining in I'm Colleen Vanderzyden I'm a registered medium and a, a certified intuitive and spiritual life coach and I like to teach every Tuesday night about something to help you live your best life so as we're talking about the darkness here something that's really important to remember is that we are going through a consciousness shift I know I've mentioned this in the past what's happening in this consciousness shift is that the energy is changing to a higher vibration this means we're moving toward a more love based energy this love based energy is where we recognize the importance of the oneness okay the idea of oneness is that we are all connected there are no superior people we are not separate from each other we are all equal and connected as human and spiritual beings the oneness means that we are also a part of the divine universal energy if we were to achieve oneness on this earth it would be like nirvana right like nirvana where we would live in peace and joy and we would all be enlightened and I know that right now this seems like an impossible dream but if each of us do our part we can help to positively accelerate this energetic change and move into the love and the oneness and in a little bit I'll give you a couple of ideas to help you be take some action and be a positive force as we go through this now I'm gonna go and check the comments because I'm already seeing you guys asking questions and everything ah uh, yes oh Shana thank you I love my class this summer I had so much fun teaching this summer great classes Felice is saying it seems to me as the stronger the light is getting and more awakening in the planet the denser energies are freaking out feeling threatened thus responding exactly Felice exactly that is exactly what's happening so this the darkness has to come to the light it has to come to the light so that we can address it right so this consciousness shift has been going on for years and over the last few years it has rapidly increased you may have been feeling the energetic changes you might be feeling unbalanced ungrounded or overwhelmed you might have noticed a sense of foreboding or dread you might truly feel scared I mean you look around and yeah right you might be feeling scared you might be more aware of protecting your energy trying to stay centered or calm you know by not watching the news don't look just don't um, you might uh, be more careful about how you're using your energy or who you spend your time with you might have noticed also that your intuition or abilities to do mediumship or healing have improved so as this energy is shifting yes the darkness is coming up and even if the darkness is not directly impacting you it is around you and we are energetic beings so your energy will feel this other energy the dark energy and that's why you're getting all these weird feelings where you're just like something's gonna happen I know it is or you feel just off somehow and unbalanced but also because the energy is shifting and raising the vibration is raising you may notice that your intuition has improved your mediumship abilities have improved you might have become more interested in spirituality or metaphysics you know so many people now are being called to help others 
Are you noticing any of this for yourselves? Are you starting to recognize some of these things? The shift is affecting everyone, whether or not they're aware of it. Hi, John. Nice to see you. Thank you for the these stars, Dana. I do have my stars turned on, people. So you can send stars. They're supposed to be like as a thank you for us doing work for you. You do whatever you want. Never any pressure from me to you. So have you been noticing some of this stuff with this energetic shift? It is very interesting because I know most of my audience here on Lilydale Radio most of you are sensitives and empaths and I bet that you have been noting so much stuff going on around you and within you and you might wake up in the night and you feel anxious and what and just strange Darlene saying I only watch the news about a half hour a day if that much yeah I can only look at the headlines these days I don't know I'm but I'm extremely sensitive apparently I've been told so but here's the thing in order for this consciousness shift to succeed to move into that oneness, move into the love, the darkness must come to the surface so it can be dissolved. The anger, the violence, the hatred, all of that stuff, the worldwide attempts at controlling or suppressing whole groups of people. This dark energy has to be brought to our awareness. And this is a very obviously low vibration energy that causes pain and suffering. The only way to counterbalance the darkness is to increase the presence of light. The light is the high vibration of love and the truth that we are all one, connected to everything and everyone and all part of the divine universal energy. You are being called, truly, you are being called to make a choice. Will you choose the love and the light or will you choose the fear and the hate? which is the darkness. This is why you've been feeling so powerless, helpless, anxious, unedged, scared. These emotions are getting your attention. They're motivating you to decide, are you going to choose the light? Are you going to choose to do what you can to make a difference? I know, somebody out there just said to themselves, I know that it seems like what can we do as an individual? What can we do? But we, each one of us is alive here for a very important reason at this very time to help. Okay, we want to. Holly is saying, I've been growing in my spiritual spirituality over the last couple of years, but currently working on reaching my highest vibration, right? Isn't that what we're doing? We want to reach the high vibration. Now, you are being called for this and when we might feel helpless or powerless and thinking you know what can we do how can we make a difference this is a doorway this is a doorway to the strength and the light of your soul you know how it is when you have a big problem something horrible happens and we can look back on our lives and we can say oh this was so horrible but look what i learned look how i grew this is on a much larger scale of course than our own problems but this is huge, right? So this is why we're feeling so unbalanced. We have to be intentional and make a choice. Each one of you in this, I know some of you might think I'm going over the top, but I'm not. This is a fact. Each one of you is alive at this very time because your soul wanted to make a difference. You wanted to help at your soul level. You came into this lifetime and you are alive right now because before you came into this life, before you incarnated, you were so brave. You were like, I got this. I can handle this. No problem. I got it. Maybe the people on the other side were saying, well, you just a couple things you need to know. It's going to be a little bit tough. And you're like, I got it. I got it. Then we come into life and we kind of forget. So now we're remembering though. So we're remembering we're here to make a difference. I said some variation of what I'm about to say to many people this past summer. And if you get my intention Tuesday email, I wrote it in there last week as well. And what I've said to so many people, and this was channeled through me, okay? It was, you're alive at this time to help counterbalance the darkness. All you have to do is shine your light one person at a time. You'll positively impact each one, creating a ripple effect that spreads the light to others. 
And as each one of us rise up in the light, this ripple effect can become a tidal wave that dissolves the darkness. Isn't that amazing? I am so happy that came through me so that I could myself also recognize this because I was having some of my own issues like, ah, what can I do? But we are alive because we are creating a ripple effect of light one person at a time. Can you imagine this? That one person at a time makes a difference. We shine our light on one person. They're uplifted and they shine their light to other people. We can combat the darkness one person at a time. All it takes is you choosing to live from the light. Now the light and the dark, they're easy to understand, but in case somebody was new to me or new to the show and not sure about things here, when you're the light, okay, think about this. When you feel light, you feel light, right? You feel happier, you feel joyful. Uh, life has more meaning and purpose. I know so many people are looking for purpose these days and they want to help. And I said to several people this summer, I said, this doesn't mean you have to go create a foundation or anything like that. It is the one person at a time. It might be smiling to someone and saying hello. Your energy when you're in the light is expansive and confident. You know, when you're in that flow, I've talked about the flow a lot, the spiritual flow. When you're in that flow, you feel expansive, you feel confident. You're living in your truth and you're making a difference and you're happier. You know, when you're in the darkness, now we know what the darkness is, a dark mood, right? We feel dark, miserable, stressed, helpless, powerless, stuck. And that's why I wrote my book, to help people get unstuck, right? Courageously, you get unstuck. When we're feeling this way in the dark, we might be blaming and feeling like a victim. Sometimes people feel vengeful, right? We've got to get back at them. And we want to attack, control, or criticize other people. I'm going to check the comments because I can see you guys writing all sorts of things. Yes, the ripple effect. It's amazing, isn't it? It's, I just find it truly wonderful that one small action makes a difference because we are all an important piece of this puzzle that is here, as I've said, and I'm going to keep saying over and over to make that difference. What about the bad choices? I'm glad you said that, Samuel, because that was going to be my next comment. How does that figure in with helping others in the collective? And I'm going to go down a little bit more and I'm going to come back up to that, Samuel. I'm blessed to have a passion opportunity to be a counselor. This is Holly Jo. I need to also be working on my own light to assist each individual that allows me to help. Yes, so we do need to. Um, now, here's an interesting thing. We do not have to be perfect. We do not have to be totally of the light at all times in order to help others, right? We are human, okay? So, you know, Samuel's saying, what about the bad choices, right? So, yes, we are human. So as humans, we are going to make mistakes. Now, my perspective on mistakes is that there are no mistakes, that everything is in divine order. That it, what we call a mistake is actually helping us learn and grow and getting us to our soul. It's a spiritual growth. I believe everything that happens to us is helping us reach our soul and spiritually growing. So these bad choices, we'll, we'll label them bad choices in quotes, people, in quotes, bad choices. As we look at these choices, that's when we reflect back to ourselves and we say, you know what, maybe I shouldn't have done it that way. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. You know, sometimes we can get impatient with people, right? You know, and then we might snap at them and then we feel badly that we shouldn't have snapped at them, you know, but we are human. And what we do is we look at our actions and behaviors and we go, oh, I'm doing the best I can. And then we forgive ourselves for making this mistake. We give ourselves some grace and we say, you know what, as long as you keep trying to do the best you can, then you are good. Okay, I would bet that most of my listeners and watchers here are not hateful people. Okay, I would guess that most of you are not out there attacking people. But this doesn't mean that on occasion we get a little bit grumpy and we might say something to somebody else that isn't the best choice. We apologize and we move on. Leanne is saying everything happens for a reason. And that is a phrase, and I may have talked about this in the past, but that is a phrase that is can be very powerful. We have to make sure we don't look at it too superficiality. -ly. I don't know if that's a word, but you know me. We make up words here. So we want to make sure we look at it from a deeper level. So if something happens to us, what can we learn from it? Okay? That's where we want to go. What can we learn? How can we give ourselves to 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 allow ourselves to learn from whatever is happening and then not beat ourselves up 
about it, right? So with this darkness, right? The darkness is there, but if you decide and choose you want to live from the light, all that's all you have to do. You intend it. Okay, now the universe is going to step in and help you. The universe is going to give you some power, okay? Because you are connected there. Your soul is light. You are your soul, right? You and your soul, they're the same. You as a soul are connected to the divine universal energy all the time. So you have access to a limitless supply of love and light. You're always in that flow. Sometimes it gets a little covered up, right? Because life happens. It gets a little covered up, but it's always there. It's always within you. This light is within you at all times. So even if you're not feeling it one day, trust that it's still there and do the best you can to move forward. When you choose to live from the light, you'll be empowered and you will make a difference. You know how many times somebody says, you know, uh, they may do something and say, if I only help one person, it's worth it, right? Personally, I want to help more than one person, right? But really, isn't it one person? And then we can set that ripple effect in motion, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about a couple of ideas, some things to think about that going to help you be the light, be intentional in living in the light. And something might really strike you in what I say tonight. You know, maybe a certain phrase I say or a question I ask or something. Just pick one little thing and play with that for a little bit, okay? Um, sometimes when we get inspired and we feel, oh, this would be fun, I wanna do this, and we try to do too much. Pick one thing and just really, really work on that. And that's really going to help. So thank you for the uh, stars, Shana, there. So the first one we're gonna talk about is kindness, of course right kindness kindness covers many aspects of living from your soul's light okay kindness covers love kindness covers caring grace forgiveness empathy integrity compassion acceptance and peace now acceptance is an interesting one because how many times do we want to change other people right we wish they would think like we do you know I can look at some of the things happening in the world and I'm going bam man I wish they would you know be nicer right okay but that's not my place to tell them how to be right so we want to have kindness we want to do this we want to be kind to ourselves as well as to others you know how it is sometimes we can be nicer to other people than we can be to ourselves we got that nice little inner critic going on in there telling us we're stupid or we can't we do this or that or whatever it is so choosing to be kind moves you into the light okay you want to shine that on yourself as well as other people and that's where that grace and forgiveness comes in when we might make a mistake or in quotes again or make a choice that we wish we had made a different one we know kindness is important. Everyone knows this, right? But there are times that it's a challenge, especially if somebody is unkind to us, right? Because we, we get defensive and we want to react, you know? And what I'm about to say right now is really important to remember. If we choose to live in the light, that means we are intentional in our responses, okay? So instead of reacting, we pause. And then we decide how we're going to respond. Are we going to respond with kindness? When we do this, we're being the light. We want to be the light. Being the light means we feel it, we think it, we live it. Our actions, our behaviors, our words reflect the kindness, reflect the light. So sometimes we do criticize ourselves. Sometimes, and I am shocked at this sometimes myself when I'm on, face, on Facebook and I see people I know are spiritual teachers or whatever attacking other people for having differing beliefs. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm appalled by that. So sometimes, but sometimes let's look at ourselves, right? I know that way back before I woke up spiritually, I was a very judgmental person and I will own that. I was very, very judgmental and I would look at people and I would criticize them. I didn't to their face, but it's the same thing. It's the same energy, right? And it was because I was insecure and I didn't feel safe as myself. It wasn't their problem. It was my problem. And when I woke up spiritually and I saw what I was doing, I couldn't believe it. I did write about it in my book. So if you read my book, you, you know some of the stories I told in there about that, some good ones. Um, but right, so we have to look at ourselves and recognize that within us, we also have a little bit of darkness in there. And it's okay. Because if we're going to step into the light, the light is going to shine on our own darkness, bring it up for us to heal.
like my judgment from years ago. It had to be brought to my awareness so I could shine the light on it and go, that is not who I really am at my soul level. That is not me. And that's not who I want to be. And so then we work on that and we play with it and we try to get ourselves in the light. So we have to be willing to look at ourselves in order to expand our light. Okay, we do not have to be perfect. I still fall into things, believe me. And I've been teaching for 20 something years and I've been working on my spiritual growth for 20 something years and I still fall into things sometimes and it's okay. And I love myself anyway. And you can do this too. So when something happens, how would a kind person respond? Kindness would be choosing not to criticize yourself or others. Just don't, just don't do it. You don't have to fill it with anything else. Just don't do it. Be kind to yourself. Speak your truth in a good way. Um, if you disagree with somebody else's opinions, kindness would dictate that there's no, lead, no need to belittle or attack them, right? Now, here's a side point we've got to talk about. I've got a couple side points tonight. Kindness doesn't mean you're a doormat, okay? This doesn't mean you're so nice that everybody can walk all over you. This doesn't mean you put up with being abused, criticized, judged. Okay, so what this means is you have to be kind to yourself. Okay, if something's happening in your life where maybe you're allowing someone to treat you as a doormat, then you need to turn that light back on yourself and go, okay, what can I do to be kind to myself? And maybe that means you speak your truth in a rational manner, of course. Maybe it means you walk away and leave the situation behind to go, you know what, I'm out, I'm not doing this anymore. Maybe you won't allow yourself to get caught up in the negativity. Maybe you won't let other people dim your light. We never want other people to dim our light. Okay. Okay. Checking comments. Oh, thank you, Shane. I'm glad you love my book. Darlene has been volunteering in shelters and that keeps her in the light. Isn't that great? Thank you, Darlene. And stepped out of your shell. You're following your soul at work, Shana. Yes, I'm so excited for you. I am so excited. The whole point of my book is to help people step outside of themselves and leave the stuff behind and be their best selves. I love it. So being kind to yourself actually straightens your light. So when you're choosing how to respond with kindness, it might be compassion to those who are hurting or scared. What's going on in the world right now with this darkness that's being revealed is that people feel threatened. Okay, they're scared. They may not know that's what's happening. They're not verbalizing it to themselves because they're not aware of it yet, okay? They're not aware. So they're feeling threatened. So people who are feeling threatened try to control or suppress others, okay? On a simple way, it could be simply judgment, right? Kindness might lead you to look at them and realize they simply don't know a better way. We don't want to do that with superiority though. We don't go, oh, they just don't understand. No, we look at them and we go, they don't understand. It's just a fact. They, they don't get it just yet. Okay, they're unaware of their fear. They don't know they feel threatened. They don't know that's what's affecting them. And you might move into some sense of compassion. This does not mean we agree with them or we approve of their behaviors or actions but we can still have compassion when we choose to have compassion for those that we ourselves might want to and I'm gonna put it in quotes hate we are rising above it we're rising above the darkness and we're stepping into the light being kind doesn't mean though that you don't stand up for fairness and equality Remember, the ultimate resolution of the consciousness shift is that we recognize and live from the oneness. That is the goal, that we are all connected and equal. So we can have that compassion rise up and we can stand up for fairness and equality. So every choice you make either increases the darkness or the light. Think about that. Every choice you make either increases the darkness or the light. What's the choice? Do you want to increase your light? I know you guys do. I know you do. If we asked ourselves this question before we did anything, before we said anything, before we took any actions, before we responded rather than reacting, if we asked ourselves this question, and we used the answer to choose the light, 
our lives would radically change. Radically change. Randy is saying standing up for fairness today was exhausting. And here is a good point, Randy. Thank you for bringing that up. It can be very hard for us, sensitive people, empaths, when we are standing up for what is fair, standing up for equality, standing up for equal rights for every single human being on this planet, it can be hard for us to keep replenishing our energy and speaking that truth and being there. All we can do is the best we can. We do it as much as we can. And if we have to hibernate for a week, to get our energy back up again, we can do that. There are different ways that each of us can stand up for fairness and equality. We don't necessarily all have to be out there marching or being an activist. But if that's what feels right to you, then you go do that, right? Okay. So, yes, it can be draining. That's another, I'm going to call it a, uh, a side effect of the consciousness shift and the darkness coming up because that energy is affecting us and we, our energy may not be as strong. It might drain faster or seem to drain drain faster so we have to be aware of our energy and pr protect it from ourselves okay i'm going back and looking at your comments um in my near death this is who am i talking to it's moving fast felice in my near-death experience i saw clearly that we can acknowledge the essence of who someone truly is the spark of the divine amen and pay attention to who they are being and have boundaries a both and situation absolutely 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 and this is the part of like acceptance when we accept somebody as they are that doesn't mean we approve or agree with them okay they are the way they are but we can also look within because within every single person is that spark that spark of light every single person has it even the ones who seem to be the most evil it is still within there and setting the boundaries yes thank you Felice for mentioning that um, yes it's very very important to acknowledge. So when we're looking at ourselves, when we're looking at other people, and we look at like something simple as criticisms, this increases the negative energy, you know, so everything we do increases the light or the dark, everything. So we don't want to convince other people they're wrong or bad. Okay, because why? There's no point in it. And we also don't want to convince ourselves that we are wrong or bad or not good enough. We can look at ourselves, see our light, and know that we're doing the best we can with who we are at this very moment. And tomorrow we'll be a better person. The next minute we'll be a better person, as long as we keep the intention to keep choosing the light. What we can do when things are going on and there's people around us who might be uh, challenging us, shall we put it that way, is change our viewpoint as we move into that acceptance and look for a positive quality to focus on, even toward ourselves, right? And that's actually the beginning of my book. We talk about some of that. You know, we talk about looking at ourselves from a different perspective where we're positive. Small, simple demonstrations of kindness will help you live in the light and will increase your ability to be kind. It's so funny because, you know, um, we have those random acts of kindness, right? Those things. And we need to uh, keep, keep playing with those ideas, right? So opening the door for someone. What a kindness is that? Letting someone go ahead of you in line at the grocery store. Leaving a big tip for a restaurant server, server. That's always fun to do. You know, something they don't expect. We can compliment someone on their hair, their smile, well, you know, whatever they said or did. If we see somebody who's unhappy or stressed out, we can be kind. We can be caring. We can let them know we're there for them and that we see them. So how can we choose to live in the light? What can we do to be kind to others? You know, I remember a story from so long ago where I was in college and I was uh, I, I was walking down the street, I was catching a bus and I had my suitcase behind me. I was catching the bus because I think I was going home to my parents' house uh, for the weekend or the week or something. I don't know. I was going somewhere. So I, I was going down the street with my suitcase and the bus did not stop at the bus stop that I thought it was going to stop at. So what do I do, right? I start running and following the bus down the street with my suitcase dragging behind me. This man, I did not know, pulls over and says, are you okay? Do you need something? As I'm trying to reach the bus, he goes, get in. So I got in this guy's car, he grabbed my suitcase, he drove up to the bus, then at the next bus stop, it stopped. He parked in front of it so the bus couldn't leave until I got on the bus. Okay, now here I am 
40 years later. And I still remember this man and this kindness he showed to me. And don't worry, I live in a small town, so it's okay. Um, getting in the car with the man, and it was also 40 years ago. Um, but I still remember this kindness that this man went out of his way, saw, he was aware enough and saw that I needed help, and he stopped and he helped me. And I just, I, I don't even know who that person was. I still don't know who it was, but I'm so grateful for that. And I'm sure you've had some other things that you've had some experiences as well, because we can see the impact that kindness makes. Kindness is that light. So think about somebody. Think about something that happened to you where somebody was kind to you. And maybe it was. You're in a rush in the grocery store and somebody said, hey, go in front of me. It's okay. I'm not in a rush. You go ahead. It's no problem. You know, think about what they did and how you felt. And it's so cool because when we think back on these kindnesses that other people have shown us, we feel loved. We feel cared for. We feel like we matter. We feel like somebody sees us, that somebody's there for us. And it's so important for us because this, then they shine their light on us and we feel inspired and we want to help others. We might feel that gratitude and that appreciation that somebody was there for us. You can probably remember some things in your life where this happened and you can remember how great it was to feel this way, where it made a difference in your life where you knew this. When you share your light to other people by choosing to be kind, not only will you feel good about yourself, right? Which is kind of a nice effect here, especially when we're dealing with all this darkness in the world that we can go, it's okay. And it's not prideful or boastful to say to yourself, oh, I'm so glad I did that. That touches my heart that I was there for that person. We don't have to be egotistical about it. We can enjoy the fact that we're there and helping somebody and being kind. But when we help somebody, we are also letting them know that they matter. These simple actions all start that ripple effect of spreading the light. You're seeing the other person and connecting with them in the oneness. Being kind is raising the vibration and decreasing the darkness. Every small action you take is helping to decrease the darkness. Can you imagine if we had so many people out there in the world, one person at a time, which is what I was told, ripple effect, one person at a time turns into that tidal wave where the darkness will diminish. It's amazing when we think about this. Another idea to help you increase your light and so you can continue to overcome the darkness is to step into the joy and the gratitude. Joy and gratitude. These are high vibrational emotions, right, that amplify and expand your light. Because when you're happy, you feel light, right? When you're grateful, you feel light. When I hear a baby laugh, isn't that like the best thing in the world? Listening to a baby laugh. It's contagious. It's one of the best sounds in the world, if you ask me. We came into this physical existence with that joy, okay? We came in here with that. It's not gone. Life has just piled on top of us a little bit, so it's gotten a little bit buried in there, but it's still there. Living in the light is choosing to be positive. We look for the good, which brings us the joy. This helps shift our perspective. It's very easy for us to get stuck in tunnel vision where we look at a problem, we look at a situation, and that's all we focus on, that's all we think about, and we get stuck in the worrying and the concern and be be feeling fearful. Ooh, that was hard for me to say today. Feeling fearful. And what can happen is when we get stuck in this tunnel vision, it minimizes the other parts of our lives. So when we look at this chaotic world, this world of turmoil, and we focus on the darkness, it can easily overwhelm us. And without awareness, it might seem that everything is wrong. And while the situation of the world is deeply concerning, it very much is, we don't have to let it infiltrate every aspect of our lives. Because we have to strengthen our lights, okay? So we don't want it to overwhelm us. There are times where it might be, you know, we're just having one of those days. We're tired and we're like, oh, go to bed, drink a lot of water. Water moves out some of the, the energy in your body. We'll move out some of the negativity. Drink a lot of water, moves out the neg negativity for you. That will help, okay? If we expand our lives and look at 
life from a wider viewpoint, we'll see that our problems are just simply one part of our lives, not the whole. From the bigger picture, we may discover that when you choose to look for joy, you'll find it, of course, in other areas of your life, right? Um, Darlene is saying, in this very hot summer, I felt sorry for an overweight man who was walking. I stopped and offered him a ride to the bus stop. Now his family and girlfriend always stop and talk to me. Now, isn't that a most beautiful example of seeing someone that Darlene noticed, saw someone, took action and showed this kindness, shared the light, and now their light is coming back to her as well. There is a perfect example of the ripple effect. When we step into this, and now they have the joy, right? When we step into this joy, we're acknowledging, and we can be acknowledging beauty or awe, a great meal, flowers, a walk, a good friend, whatever it might be, helping someone. And then we express our gratitude. I'm sure this man was so grateful to Darlene for stopping and helping him. When we express this gratitude now for our own selves as we are living, and you know how it is sometimes we get a little down with what's going on in the world or just our own situations or just because we woke up that way that morning. A gratitude list actually works, okay? We do feel better and we start writing down those small things. I always tell people to literally write it down either in their computer or their phone or on a piece of paper because on a day when you're not feeling very uplifted, you look at that paper and you go, yes, I am grateful you know, for the weather, the, the changing leaves, the flowers, whatever it might be. When we're grateful, we can also share that appreciation with others. You know, when we say thank you to the, the server in the restaurant, when we thank somebody for helping us, whatever it is. As we start to rebalance our perspectives and claim the light, what we're doing is we're creating a new habit of looking at life from a more positive perspective. I have a friend who on a beautiful sunny day um, will comment that it's probably going to rain. I have another friend who will say, what an amazing day. I love it. So which perspective is of the light? Which perspective helps us live in the light? The one that makes us feel good. The one that is joyful, uplifting, and positive. We have a choice in how we view our moments. We can choose the positive or the negative. And now here's another side trip for us for a second. This doesn't mean we don't experience sadness. Okay. This doesn't mean we live from toxic positivity. Toxic positivity is when we bypass our emotions, uh, believing we need to be positive no matter what problems we may be experiencing. People who are on a spiritual path sometimes get stuck in toxic positivity because we feel like as spiritual beings, we're supposed to be positive and nice and kind and loving and da 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 da. And if we're not careful, that can turn into not having boundaries. That can turn into not standing up for ourselves. That can turn into us skipping our emotions. And as I always say, and I say this so much, we must experience all of our emotions, the good ones, the ones we want, and the ones we may not want so much of. This is the only way to process them. We don't want to skip the tough ones. Once you step into them, it only takes a couple of minutes to bring it up and out, literally. Next time you're resisting an emotion and you maybe you feel sad, but you don't want to cry or something like that, decide to, to go into it, step into it instead, instead, and then see how long it takes to get through it. It usually takes one to two minutes. Now, if you are in severe grief, you've had a big loss, different situation totally, okay? Different situation. Otherwise, it takes one to two minutes to get through it, okay? So we want to be able to process the emotions because then we can think more clearly. We can get back into our light, okay? So being positive doesn't mean we don't feel the other emotions, and it doesn't mean we are, exp we are living from toxic positivity. Don't do that. Just don't. Okay, I'm telling you how to live right now. Don't do that, <laughs> okay? But really, what we want to do is have our our light shining. So when we are joyful, our light shines. It really does. It positively impacts everyone around us simply with your presence, 
just by you being there. You know what it's like to be around someone who is joyful or expresses gratitude or just is fun, right? You start to feel better. It's an energetic connection. The energies, we are all connected energetically. So when you're around someone who's very joyful, you feel happier, usually. Same thing, vice versa. You're happy, the people around you will feel that way too. Just like a baby's laugh. It's contagious. It is contagious. Our light expands and creates that ripple effect, one person to the next. When you choose to live in the light, you will feel better. Okay? You'll feel better. I know with everything that's happening in the world right now, it can be very uh, distressing, very distressing. And if we make the choice and intend to live from the light, we are shifting our perspectives. This does not mean that we are di diminishing or dismissing what is happening, okay? But we can balance it a little bit so we can feel better. And when we feel better, then we can take action as we want to. We'll also have more peace, more joy, more meaning, and more purpose. And maybe part of your purpose is to get out there and be that activist, you know, and stand up for things. When you choose to live in the light, you're counterbalancing the darkness. One person at a time is good. We do not have to set up a foundation. We do not have to become a politician to do this. But if you want to, you go ahead. Maybe that's how you shine your light. Maybe you want to be a politician. You can become that activist and stand up for equality if that's what you want. That would be without violence, of course, because that would be of the darkness. So you can stand up for things. And as each of us rise in, up in the light, recognizing the oneness we are all connected this all goes together everything i'm saying it all goes together we'll be positively positively contributing to the consciousness shift and creating that ripple effect so you have a choice will you choose to live in the light okay this doesn't mean again that you have to go off and do something huge it is one person one action one behavior at a time. Probably the most important thing I've said today is every response you make either increases the darkness or the light. If you remember nothing else, that may be enough for you to become so aware of yourself, to go, wait a minute, what am I going to do? How am I going to respond to this? Is this a dark response or a light response? Is it kindness, caring, and love, compassion, forgiveness, grace? Or is it criticism, bullying, judgment? gossiping is it that whatever it might be every response you make either increases the darkness or the light will you be intentional in your responses that way will you rebalance your perspectives to help you live in the light look for the good look for the joy look for the gratitude I said this a long, long time ago in a lecture. Do you remember that bombing at the marathon, the Boston Marathon? I don't know how long ago now, probably a long time ago. I have no concept of time these days. You remember that bombing? And I remember watching a video of that. And so a bomb had already gone off, and then another bomb went off. And what people did is they ran toward the bombs to help the people that were near it. I couldn't believe it when I saw this. It was one of those moments where your mind just goes, wow, you know, so here they could have been hurt or whatever, but they were living in their light and they saw a need and they went toward it. So when there is darkness, there is also light. Okay. Even when we see some of the things happening in the United States today, and in other countries too, but we see the things happening here in the United States, and we go, wow, it's bad, 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 bad. But also, there are all these other people out there working to make a difference. Okay, Working to make that difference. They're choosing the light. So, will you... I'm going to challenge you. Will you be a part of the tidal wave of light? ripple effect turns into the tidal wave so that you can help dissolve the darkness. I know I had a couple conversations with people around me who was like, I don't know, what can we do? What can we do? We can only do what we can do. Okay. I would not be a good politician. I could not do it. But I can be nice to people and I can teach people and I can share my light and I can share my love and I can let people know that 
they've got the power you have the light within you so that you can go out there and make a difference it is so 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 important okay it is as and i've moved into preaching mode i know you guys have been waiting for it right i had a few moments earlier where i go off and i'm getting guidance and stuff but it is so important that we don't lose the hope we do not lose the hope we must take action to shine this light we actually have to thank you for accepting the challenge we are going to do this and we are going to do it as best we can it's actually amazing and I'll, and I'll stop talking in a minute how late did I go tonight oh not too bad um, you know what's really amazing when you think about this a little bit more is that our souls are connected to the divine energy right and again I said this earlier if we are connected and we are that means we are have limitless light love and abundance we are it's limitless we don't have to use our own energy that's you know, stuck in our little bodies here we have all of that energy all we have to do is intend to use it that's all we have to do set the intention it's so simple really and then we just have to keep making the commitment over and over making the choice live in the light making the choice it's all you have to do isn't that amazing I mean it's so simple isn't it not always easy but so simple and I know you can do it. emissary of light is there a book of that I think there was a book with that wasn't there it was awesome emissary I love that yeah it's you know it's it's tough and here's the thing and I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret nobody really knows this yet except for my coaching groups from the past two years and my new coaching group will know it too but we are going to be starting a spiritual empowerment online community where we are going to be there for each other we are going to teach some workshops we're going to have live question and answers a lot like my shows here we're gonna be doing that it's gonna be starting up in a couple months maybe sooner and if you're interested in being a part of this spiritual empowerment community you can let me know but I of course will post it on my page once we have some things going but we're gonna be doing all sorts of stuff so that you all can find your people you can find the people who get you where you can support each other where you can be there for each other and you can learn and you can grow and you can step into your power where you can claim your energy where you can be that light worker and be with the other people so we are starting a spiritual empowerment online community it's going to be so much fun and it's a secret nobody knows yet except you guys so we are going to be doing that and we will let you know though once we get that out there and see what you guys really want to learn about it like what do you really want to know to make sure we do it um yeah right down days are tough so we are going to do that yes finding your tribe that's what we're going to do we're going to be starting this group so that you guys can find yourself and have so oh it's going to be amazing just amazing i'm so excited about it so um now that i'm home i was traveling a bit but um now that i'm home for a little bit of time we've got time to really start planning it out and getting it organized and everything so that we can get to it um so we're going to be doing that and also I'll remind you again about my um, Courageously You small group coaching program that'll be different than the spiritual empowerment group of course because the Courageously You small group coaching program is a lot of individual attention for you and um, small group where people they actually become best friends the groups it's amazing and it's way beyond what I ever could have imagined those groups could be just amazing so that's coming up so check my website for that courageously you small group coaching program Colleen Vanderzyden.com or be courageously you dot com uh, check out my book if you haven't yet courageously you magical mind games to get unstuck and reignite your joy check that out if you haven't yet and if you have read it and you bought it on Amazon please write me a review that would be so awesome um, and I think that about covers it I have talked and talked and talked tonight but I was so excited to see you guys I haven't talked to you in four months so I had a lot of ideas I needed to share with you and I've got some more for coming up soon um, yeah the tribe from the coaching group it's amazing isn't it you guys are like this it's so much fun so we got a couple opportunities for you coming up if you want a lot of individual attention and then the other one where we're gonna have this community oh it's gonna be so exciting well anyway I should stop talking because you probably all have to do other things in your life but I want to thank you so much and take up my challenge are you going to choose the light are you going to choose the dark I know you're going to choose the light go for it and let's see what happens yes together we are the light yes
Yes, Felice, yes. You guys have a most amazing night, and I've got to figure out how to shut this down because I made my thing go big. Oh, I fixed it finally. <laughs> Only took 45 minutes. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching tonight, and I will talk to you guys next week. Have a fun week.